We're live. This puppy. We're live. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, the mysterious community of Bryant Falls, where nothing much has been happening, but a bit of suburban drama is threatening to explode. Metaphorically, I mean, yeah. not literally. No, that would be that would be several episodes from now. <clears throat> but okay, <laughs> enough on that. When we last left off, I recall. Let's see. I wanted to say welcome um, to Brian Falls, George, where everything is made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> oh, the points are very important. They don't refresh until the end of the uh, adventure. <laughs> Fun. So, mm -hmm. so maybe they matter. Let's see. So far, interesting things we have. Let's see. Smears of something read by George Duncan's back door that are blood, some form of representative marking, and deliberate symbology. A uh, trash can half full of rotten food. A uh, a set of accounts stretched thin. Uh, a number from a a number from an emergency clinic. A number of handguns that are all safely locked away except for one. Mm-hmm. We were just speculating something, you know. We only have. Now, the reason he went running across to the house, I was just wondering, possibly he saw something happening, or possibly he heard screaming, and Dave pointed out that if he heard screaming, both of the Finleys who were there would have heard it, right? And I said, who's to say they didn't? Well, the Finleys, for one. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but for some reason, I find myself not trusting him. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, you may have to talk with at least one of them. Well, uh, actually, okay. One of our number isn't here who was going to go talk to Samantha Finley. Yes. That was probably me. We should make sure that she has that phone number, too. The one that George wanted her to have. We think yeah. he wanted her to have. We don't we actually know. We have Casey. Casey can talk to her. Yes. Right. Casey is a, uh, is a political animal. She knows how uh, to talk to uh, people. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> oh. A political animal, like a hamster. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you keep the wheels running. Um, there were several things that I was just wondering about now. Um, okay. Did we actually know if he just said he was uh, cleaning his gun or if there were actually like, you know, like the, the materials that you would be using for that, like the, the oil and, and the, the cloth and whatever? He could um, also have one for self-defense and the others locked up. Well, that's true, but I think that's what he said. That was his his story. I don't remember anyone saying anything about that because you mm -hmm. haven't talked to either Findlay. That's I mean, right. I thought that's what we heard from the that's sheriff or the deputy. <coughs> well, we could talk to the deputy and see if we could get something. Because he seems to be a deputy. Um, the deputy was aware. He did say that George would be leaving the plane. It seems to me like the deputy might be kind of in it on his side. Now, maybe... Legally, he can't tell us what statement they got. But uh, actually, I'm not sure about that. That's fine. Maybe you should talk to the deputy. Also, so the fact Martin Spencer the, should talk to the deputy. The, yeah, the, right. The fact that I'm the fact that I'm about to um, start working at a newspaper that he seems to think needs some fresh blood because there's something wrong up there. Mm -hmm. Probably editorially or something. <laughs> well. Commented to me that they need straightening out. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, we're broadcasting now. So basically the plan is to talk the deputy and the person who was going to talk to Samantha isn't here, but... Yeah, but Casey can do that. 
Right. Casey can talk to Samantha, you can talk to the deputy, then we know more. Uh -huh. Indeed. I might, might give us some context. So just now wait a minute, where did we leave off? What time was it? Oh, well, I believe it was uh I believe it was getting on toward late evening, the day after the killing, and uh, you had gone back to you had gone back to look right. around the house again, yeah. around George Duncan's mm -hmm. house, and discovered that uh, uh, the door was kicked in and a certain piece was missing. Right, the amulet was also, gone. Also, was there a footprint on the door? There was a footprint on the door. Take a picture mm -hmm. of it. Does it look like mm -hmm. a big boot, we like have to, like um, it was uh, Jonathan Blake. He has the picture. He he took great pictures with advanced technology. Right. So he has a great camera, and he took pictures of the of the drawing and of the footprint. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, that's that's a question. Did I go by the house? I don't think I did. No, you didn't. Right. Okay. So I, I it, wait. So who had gone by the house again? Uh, Blake and myself. Blake and and Namara McNamara. So right. that puts okay. So we had. Uh, let me get. Let me get the character names up again. So we had Martin Spencer going to talk to the, sh talk to the sheriff. We had Casey Chapman planning on talking to Samantha. Not the best time for me to do that. The Not right now, no. Yeah. So. I think I'm gonna, I don't think we want to talk to the sheriff. He seems more like one of those. You know, we got a nice, peaceful little town, Mister. We like it that way. Mm -hmm. No awkward questions. But I think yeah. the deputy might be more willing to listen. To he says after the murder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want any more trouble around here. No. Right? Which would be yeah. a, a a fair way to put that. So yeah. he puts it. Yeah. So signs pop up around town. No handguns or unsterilized bedding. <laughs> so so we we in the group we talk uh on the phone and we uh, sh message uh, text messages so we coordinate that everybody knows about the break-in and the missing amulet and the oh. shoe oh. and we decide mm -hmm. that Martin Spencer talks to Deputy Frechette right but of course obviously since it's evening at this point I'm not gonna yeah. go do that now tomorrow Okay. Right. Interestingly, that does put Roy McNamara and Jonathan Blake right there near the house with the people they want to talk to. Uh huh. That is just pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, but but we are the house with the people you want to talk to. At least one of home has been known to uh, fire a gun. Yeah, has been known to fire a gun, and we are. A strange guy who looks a, looks dangerous and uh, an alcoholic, former teacher. That's not the kind of people you want to well, ring on your door like and driving on unhealthy interest in sixteen yeah, girls. Yeah, we, we are not the guys who should ring on a door at night and say we want to talk to the teenage daughter. Right. Well, well we can kind of no. open that. <laughs> That's, I think, why we assigned somebody else to that. Yes, that's yeah. why we send Casey the next day. Mm -hmm. But I think what I'll take I would... with me too because she has, uh, the, first of all, buddy system. Secondly, mm -hmm. she is good at things like reassuring people. So, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, also detecting bullshit. That's good. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, is your daughter in? We need to yeah. talk to her about diversifying her stock portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you dress in a suit and have a quick word, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, have, and have a quick what? 
<laughs> have a clipboard. Oh, no, clipboard. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought you said look bored, but that might be not be a, a good idea. Um, okay. But what would I what I would want to do if there is anything to drink in this house, then I would stay here <laughs> what? that night. <laughs> I, I don't have a job the next day waiting for me. You're, not, so, so you're searching George Duncan's house for alcohol. Uh, yes. I'm not, I, I don't think the there's house for booze. Yes, I think Here's there the should thing. be something in the kitchen. Maybe he has like some kind of um, al alcohol sense where, like, if he's if he looks and sees what oh, does he no. keep stocked, he can tell what kind of person he is. Like, if if he, um, I don't know, finds. Oh right! Look at look at what kind of booze he's got. That'll tell you something about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's the first part. And after I found the booze, I'm, I'm going to wait. I, now I am now imagining what Kenneth Height would do with that. After uh, Book Hounds of London and Dream Hounds of Paris, you could have Booze Hounds of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in fact, so would, you start going through yeah. his kitchen uh, looking for the good stuff, and mm -hmm. he doesn't have any. That's impossible. Uh, <laughs> um, he's immediately a suspicious. No person. liquor, no liquor bottles. Remember, not even beer. And that's strange. Oh, so he, he was, well, he's not living clean anymore. But wait. Well, also you're also you're not checking that fridge for beer. No, no, no. I, I did check the fridge, and I would have seen beer if there was any. Uh, but <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Uh, but there's a there's a, there's a basement, right? Um, it's a concrete pad house. No basement, nope. but there is a little bit of a garage that is uh, a chock a block mess, and there is a refrigerator. No, there wouldn't okay. even be a refrigerator out there. There'd be a freezer out there. No refrigerator. Huh. Uh, but I would still check the garage for booze. Uh, if there's something yeah. standing around, it's not. It it maybe it's not too cold, but it's not too warm either. It's okay, I think, if it's in the garage. If it's in the garage, maybe. But yeah, there are a priorities. lot of old boxes out there with old lady stuff and some uh, boxes of uh, uh, building supplies. Where it looks like uh, he, some he or someone like him was going to start making some repairs to the house. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, but no boo no booze bottles, no beer bottles, not even in the trash. Andreas, you should look to see if there are any boxes marked clues. <laughs> uh, are there any boxes marked clues <laughs> or Don't booze? Be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, no booze box. <laughs> no boxes labeled red herrings either. No. Okay. Any oh, therapy with my help? Mention them. Is there a blue paw print anywhere? <laughs> it, it'd be and I really blue... hope that people understand that reference. <laughs> Booze clues? Oh. Yeah. Because yeah. I was about to feel really young. <laughs> I barely figured it out. I, I, I caught the reference. I, I was trying to figure out a tactful way to introduce it myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so again, good tactic while you're playing this game is look over your your uh, your investigative skills and just mention any that might work. Like, for example, if you have flatter, I don't think that's going to work because there's nobody here. But, okay. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So I'm going, because I uh, what I want to do in the end, my end game is, uh, I want to stay in this house for ten, for this night, and watch through the windows on the back, uh, on the back, the house of the Findleys to see if anything happens there, anything mm. strange during the night. That's a good idea. Uh, but uh, I can't really do that without booze. Or at least it would be hard. Yeah. It would be easier. So who wants? So are, who wants to you, do a beer I, run for the stakeout? Yeah. Are you can? Are you communicating 
your yes. idea to legally stay in the evidence house? Uh, yes, I, I tell you about that. I, I'm looking for the booze, and I tell, while I do that, I tell you my plan. That is the single dumbest thing <laughs> I have ever heard. I can't let you oh, stick that. around. I'll be right over. The, the, stick around. <laughs> the campaign is young. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, okay you so, come here. so I'm going to bring the drinks. Okay, that's great. And stay awesome. with him because this is a really dumb idea. Excellent. <laughs> okay, that's good. So I'm waiting here. I'm setting up our watcher's nest in the first in the in the top floor, and and we are staying here. And you bring the drinks. Excellent. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> I know we it's will a be friends. Horrible idea. I'll bring the drinks and. <laughs> <laughs> and perfect and the salty snacks well <laughs> no he's in charge of can't be in charge of you you're both there why don't you send him out for a, a booze run <laughs> yes we're just breaking into somebody's house so what 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 line goes good with uh breaking an enemy it was okay. already broken into it's just unlawful entry yes. now <laughs> and even that's even... up for debate because the owner well, actually dead. we don't know it's possible Somebody kicked open the door, but um, but the question is, uh, for some weird reason, I'm thinking it might have been the sheriff, but uh, why would the sheriff, the door was not locked, but the sheriff would have locked it, and then somebody kicked it open. Exactly, and they, they were, they wore sneakers, so the sheriff would have kicked it open with a cowboy boot, right. not with sneakers. And, and what's more, what's more, for some weird reason, uh, the only person I can think of who might kick the door open would be uh, would be uh, most likely Samantha. Is a Samantha, and but that would mean she's a pretty strong girl. <laughs> or it's a pretty you? weak yeah. door. Yeah. Did you happen to notice what kind of shoes Mr. Finley was wearing? You yeah, probably nope. Didn't. Who looks at a man's shoes? No, who does that? No. There's a movie about that. <laughs> we didn't, uh, but I'm pretty sure it was Samantha. What skills to give a character based on Sherlock Holmes? A really high notice, for one thing. Mm -hmm. Really high notice. Maybe also trivia would be a good one. Yeah, notice and <laughs> trivia. But, but very well be. But we ain't Sherlock Holmes, so we don't know what to do to the war. But also, he, he was Slim Dixie. He was in his house. Uh, he he was at home, so he wouldn't wear outside shoes in his home. I guess. Well, some people but, do. Yeah, but either way, it's a small. It was a small shoe. It was exactly said. It was a small shoe. Yeah. I'm. I also think Samantha, but. We yeah. will find it out, but we have the photograph. We're talking either she really works out, or maybe she was possessed and her strength was augmented, but we have no idea if this is that kind of universe. And even if it is, our characters don't know that it is. Exactly. But so many so if this is if this is ultimately going to be a supernatural investigation, you know so little of the ground rules so yeah. far. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that will come that will come with time. And yeah, survival. We, we will have Maybe. the time because we have we have the photograph, and sooner or later we will be at the house of the Findlays, and we will look at their shoes, but not now. Now we watch their house. We don't know if she has cybernetic now, legs. It's like a world record high jumper. Yeah, the, the six now million you're thinking, dollar. You're thinking woman. you're you're thinking of that other game. <laughs> I, actually, I I must be. There yeah. wasn't. There's an, an old TV show, the six seven million dollar woman. She has such bionic legs. <laughs> yep. Maybe it has a different title in America. Maybe something it like did. the Bionic Woman or something. It did, yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Anyway, just to push ahead with the investigation, um, I am going to. I am going to. Oh, I'm hardly going to leave it there. 
but I am going to set the stage with John Blake and Roy McNamara um, watching the house across the way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I'm there. Nope. You're not there yet at the moment. We right. are just two, two guys. Right. Just two guys, two guys drinking and in watching. a dead man's house, drinking, oh, yeah, black, right drinking right. booze and watching yeah. a house. Mm -hmm. It goes. By the way, I should I should mention to you uh, if um, you know, like like last spring, I had a little bit of a stroke, and sometimes in things like this, I discover that my volume control on my voice is a little, a little, uh, a little. It slips sometimes into outdoor voice settings, so oh, I notice it. So if that happens, uh, just remind me. I'm trying to train okay. myself not to do that anymore and to pronounce things right. But anyway. That's hard for all of us. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So let's see. I need I need for these two to describe the rest of the evening at the Finley's house. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have Samantha up in her room, uh, which is on the right side of the uh, second floor, looking yeah, at it from George's house. She's like on steroids. Uh, never mind. I'm not there. Sorry. Yeah. Her, her room is overwhelmingly pink and purple. Oh, dear. She occasionally kicks back on the bed, and uh, you, you see legs flailing about occasionally. Actually, uh, nothing particularly. Um, then she gets up again, paces around a bit, grabs her, fo grabs her phone, texts. I'm... I'm letting him take first watch of watching the house. In the meantime, I'm putting um, protective sigils on sticky notes and putting them on the doors and windows. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Of a sticky note. <laughs> Better hope a breeze doesn't come by, though. Mm-hmm. Depending if you notice you a breeze down. inside the house, remove a sticky note with a protective <laughs> sigil. You know something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> I guess if they're inside the house I'm, and not on the outside. I'm okay. sure that was just a normal gust of wind. <laughs> yeah. Inside the house. Inside the door, blowing off the protective sticky note. It's nothing. Yeah. There's still a good early warning system then, I guess. Just the usual <laughs> things in the house. That's <laughs> <happening all time. laughs> you already knew the house was haunted. That's fine. It's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Doesn't this happen in everybody's home? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, a ton of people freaking out. My character's just like, no, this happens. In my house all the time. Just like the, you know, 50% of the guests who just disappear into my basement. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say disappear. I'm sure they're fine. They're still it's there, fine. In fact. It's fine. Yeah. It's completely well, normal. In the basement that I need to worry about. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. back to... in the basement that sometimes screams. Sorry. <laughs> So back to Samantha. So back to, back to stuff. Well, there's Samantha in the second floor window being unrepentantly teenage. Mm -hmm. uh, there are the parents, uh, Oliver and Laura, on the first floor, uh, left side of the house as you're looking at the uh, house. Uh, Samantha comes downstairs briefly. Oliver sends her right back upstairs. She goes stomping in that passive-aggressive way some teenagers do. The manner of someone who was put upon as no one in history ever has ever been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Laura and o Oliver have this sort of... Um, I hesitate to call it a conversation. Looks more like a quiet argument with uh, big gestures. Right. Right. Something where they're whispering at each other at the top of their lungs. 
Yes. You should get one of those devices that like bounces a laser off windows so you can hear what they're saying. Yeah. Or a parabolic. Well, I don't think or, I have enough preparedness for that. But I, can aim I don't think we will either. <laughs> that would be a lot. Although bird watchers are known for occasionally using shotgun mics. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Laura and Oliver have this sort of uh, wild discussion. Um, Laura sends Oliver up to talk upstairs, and he appears in Samantha's room, and uh, they have a much sort of... Uh, well, she is using big gestures, and he isn't. Mm. Then Laura sort of looks around the room, looks over at George's house. No. Huh? Wave. Not. not just. <laughs> Play it cool. I'm behind a window. She can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> behind a window? Well, like we don't we don't huh? have light on on, on the, in behind the oh. window. We 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 would watch our 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 uh, mirrors in the in the window if we had lights on. We don't. We just look at the we ha sit in the dark watching the house that has lights on. So she, so she's watching her own reflection in the window if she's looking at mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I hope, except if she has strange eyes. Okay. But maybe she has she has a plan. She sends him up and then she does something strange. So let's watch her. Well, what's going to happen there? Yeah, she does take a look over your way, and uh, <laughs> she looks somewhat disappointed, maybe. It's hard mm. to tell. But she goes on over to that gun cabinet, mm. opens it up, takes out some keys, uh, picks out a pistol, removes the guard. Oh. Uh... uh Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Take well, a look. I thought you said I could have the last pe piece of pepperoni. Uh, look, look, look. Uh, Laura just takes a gun out of the uh, cabinet there, there, and prepares it. Mm -hmm. Laura Findlay has a, a uh, pistol now unlocked and is walking over toward George's house. Whoa. Uh, Jonathan, oh. she's coming over with a gun. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. Yeah. laughs> okay, well, answer the door. I'll cover you. Uh, wait, no, we, we are not here. We are not here. We have to hide. <laughs> she gets over to the fence. Okay. Let's so, around that a bit. Hey, wait till she walks in and shoot her. <laughs> That's for chat. <laughs> I go into the basement. You don't goes have over a, to the. We don't have you a come basement. up with a convincing cover story. I'll we be. You, your you backup. come up with a better excuse than a basement on a concrete pad house. We don't have a basement. We have just uh We have just a. a um, where you put your clothes, you know. What's it Offer called? Offer her the last Closet? piece of pepperoni. You're a handsome guy. You've got this. <laughs> Laura goes over to the fence, which is off to the side between the two houses, uh, opens it up, and proceeds through into George's yard. Hold okay. the door closed. Just go okay. underneath and like, hold it closed. So uh, I hand him the pizza box and walk out of the room briskly. <laughs> 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 oh, you guys are going to get murdered. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. We, we are on the top floor, yes? Throw him under so, the bus. No. You're on the second floor? Uh, yes, so we have a good good view from up there. So when mm -hmm. she comes in, she will be in the in the lower floor first. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We got oh. this. Everything <laughs> will be all right. Just keep quiet, okay? 
Okay. Dude, assuming she has a sense of smell, she's going to notice we have pizza. We have pizza and beer and... Uh, Fight or shit. flight, dude. Okay. Okay. We, let, we have to wait what happens. We have to improvise. <laughs> yeah. okay. Use your words. You've got this. I have faith in you, man. Okay. <laughs> Liquid courage. Go. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> shit. I take a. I'll... Yeah, I'm. I'm imagining we're both a few beers in at this point. Oh, Hence yeah. this wonderful plan. Well, I should ask you. I should ask you to take a look at your interpersonal skills because at some point they might become relevant soon. But then I look at your two columns and say, "Oh well, do what you can." <laughs> you could interrogate her. Oh uh, yeah, interrogate. Yes, I, I could also <laughs> offer her. Uh, I, I could also be a shrink for her. I've got reassurance. Negotiation. I can reassure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. You can impersonate. Oh, look at me! <laughs> <laughs> no one has impersonate. <clears throat> Though you I can, can I, I, I can tell her something about how the gun works because I have science. I'm a physics teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. No chance of this going wrong. So, she doesn't come into the house, but she does Ooh. sort of get up there where she can see into the first floor. And uh, up to the second floor and say, okay. And to the closed windows and nobody in particular. Okay, who's in there? <laughs> that isn't funny. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to use this, you know. I'm also not afraid to use this, she says, holding up the phone. Yeah, definitely. Oh, fine, I'll take this. I'll take this. No. <laughs> definitely <laughs> use phones before guns. <clears throat> Would you like a piece of pizza and an explanation? It's pepperoni. I'm not much on pepperoni. However, the explanation would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, okay, then <clears throat> let's sit down here. How many okay. people are in there at this time of night in a dead man's house, no less? <laughs> Have you no shame? Just uh, the two. two uh, are you, wait. Do you want to include non corporeal <laughs> entities? Because <laughs> if so, no. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, corporeal entities? Just the two of us. Oh, three. Just the three of us. Yeah. My dog is really cute. Though, if you could put the gun away before I invite you into the house, both me and my dog would appreciate that. Uh, if you don't mind, I will hang on to it, but I will put the safety on. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going... Yeah. Well, in that case, we're not going to open the door all the way. I mean... No. No safety goes both ways. No, don't 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 be such a dick. Well, let's open the door. And it's <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so. fine. But I'm standing behind you. Okay, stand behind me. Okay, I open the door. I become Bye, down. You. I open the door. I invite her in. Let's take a seat here. It's the living room. Aren't you a bit old for a uh, gothic pizza party or whatever your whatever? <laughs> okay, it's not whatever you kids would call it. You're grown men. What? What is going on? <clears throat> well, let's. Do you? Would you care for a drink? What do you like? Uh, beer uh, or sobri whiskey? Sobriety. Sobriety. Yeah. You can't Sobriety. offer it. I don't. I don't, I don't know that brand. What? What's? What kind of brand is that? <laughs> Sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> that <was> the perfect. <laughs> Sobriety brand vodka. <laughs> we've we've also got Coke and water. Would you like a Coke or a water? I'll take a water, thank you. There you go. So, hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, what kind of shoes does she wear, by the way? Uh, looking at, at her shoes. Well, she's wearing... Um, she's wearing casual shoes. She's wearing... Uh, 
slip slip ons. Okay. So I'm Jonathan Blake. I'm a uh, I'm a nature photographer, but I am also a part time paranormal investigator. And I'm paranormal seeing if I can get any information on restlessness within the house that might help aid the murder investigation. It's Restless not... spirits in this house? Yeah. Yep. Yes, yes. It has passed. Okay. Yeah. I show her the picture of the symbol that we found. Have you seen this that? before? No. It's got um, cranberries or cra craisins, milk, and vanilla in it. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> so you haven't seen this. Before, that's a very huh? that's a very strange symbol. It <laughs> sounds <laughs> delicious, though. <laughs> yeah. Can I have some? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's a delicious symbol. It's a delicious <laughs> symbol. They heard you listing off the ingredients on air. They're like, oh. Part, part of this, this magical symbol sounds amazing. Part of this, part of this complete ceremony. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Honey, honey, honey bunches and sigils. <laughs> Honey <laughs> bunches of sigils. Honey bunches of sigils. <laughs> you like fun and happy? And and blood. Let's let's the, let's make sure that we do recognize this pre off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really good, honey. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I think honey bunches of sigils tops it. I can't think of anything better. <laughs> so lucky charms that's that's the best i got <laughs> have you ever seen anything weird take place in this house or your own no <clears throat> no ours is a very ordinary house it's a very 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 fine house Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> Any weird rumors about the block or street? Not that I've heard. Or anything with the former occupant of this house, um, Mr. This is a fairly new development. Yeah, but <clears throat> but the the grandmother of. George Duncan lived here, so. Mm -hmm. So anything? Well, we've been. Well, we okay. When I say, oh wow. When I say recent development, yeah, we've been here for about fifteen years. That's okay. quite. That's yeah. That's maybe not so recent. Mm hmm. So, what can you tell us about the person who was murdered? George Duncan? Yeah, what did you know about um, him? He was... Um, well, he was... Um, he mostly kept to himself. Um, Oliver didn't like him much. and um, I, I, She is more or less stammering and hemming and hawing through... Uh, uh, three or four half explanations. She seems sort of skittish, confused, and uh, maybe just a little bit resigned to the situation. Um, this would be the time that someone with reassurance hmm. would reassure her. Would reassure her. Okay. I Go absolutely ahead. reassure her. Hey, we're we're here together. You know, if there's an event, we are extremely prepared for it. You know, 
we're we're going to be what okay. Kind of, wait, what kind of event are you talking about? Um, it's just a sh oh, just it was just a shooting. It's uh, no nothing that you, yeah. Well, okay, still that shooting. Yeah. I understand how you might be a bit jittery. Must be disconcerting for you. I'm sure this is the first one you've ever dealt with. Yes, it is. Okay. George Duncan, Duncan really didn't seem that bad to me, at least after he got out of jail, but, uh, you know, Oliver, you know, Oliver, Ollie was talking about how someone really ought to put that druggie down. He might have been a bit, um, I don't know, eager about it? What about, uh, I'm, I'm, pu I'm using Ollie? bullshit detector. Her, her husband is Oliver. I'm okay. putting, I'm using bullshit detector on her to see if she's lying. Um, she is not lying about uh, Oliver being kind of, uh, shall we say, bloodthirsty about George Duncan. Mm -hmm. But there is something else that uh, she is uh, not talking about. She's she's hiding something. Oh, <clears throat> I'm trying to to uh, get it out of her by a soft interrogation skills. Really soft interrogation skills in this really case. Really soft. She has a gun in her hands and I don't. <laughs> I, have a, yeah. I have a bottle of beer. She has a gun. So I'm you brought going a beer to. to a, you brought a beer to a gunfight. <laughs> exactly. So I, I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to just be uh, ask in a roundabout way, like I would ask uh, a uh, a student at school who did something wrong and doesn't really like to admit it. So not with not with intimidation, but just uh, with encouraging her to come forward with it. Kind of the, is that really all you want to let us know? It might be bureaucracy <laughs> if you think about it in an offhand, weird way. Yeah. <clears throat> Also, she has a gun. She he walks around with the gun, and she handles it like an expert. So there's also the question: Who really shot uh, George Duncan? Was it Oliver or was it her? We don't know. So I'd like to, while I ask her, I'm trying to to find out. So I'm using interrogation softly. <laughs> Interrogate the gun wielder. Yes. Softly interrogating the gun. <clears throat> yeah, under those circumstances, you really can't be intimidating enough to get any information no, out I, of I her. Don't, I don't want to be You're intimidating. Probably... Right, Not but intimidating. Uh, encouraging. Yeah, the skill you want to use in this case. Let's say, and this is something either of you could choose to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she'll need to be persuaded more uh, gently than that. I, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. I do not want to uh, see Oliver get into any more trouble than he needs to. Just uh, he needs yeah. to get into trouble, everybody. <clears throat> oh, okay. I will give a... more comfortable talking to another woman. No, not wait, necessarily. Wait. No, I think we're both finding out a good bit in this situation. Now, okay. here's the deal I'm going to offer you either a one point spend in negotiation. Or a two-point spend in shrink. Oh, 
Negotiation. Negotiation is an interpersonal investigative skill, and okay. shrink is the general skill. Mm -hmm. Roy has the shrink, John Blake has the negotiation. Who wants to pony up? <clears throat> well, I think I'm going to give you the shrink. Okay. I think you're going to go all shrinky at her. <laughs> shrinky yeah. dink. Shrinky. There we go. Two more points of shrink spent. Mm -hmm. and, so you uh, don't want me to negotiate? Oh, maybe we need to negotiate later on. Okay. Yeah, not impossible. Okay, there was something strange last night. Um, that gun that was out on the table. I was the first one to notice it. Oliver didn't even see it until I pointed it out to him, and he said he'd put it back into the case next time he got up. Hmm. That's when uh, George came running through, and he almost instinctively picked up the gun and shot him. He usually keeps his, he usually keeps all of his guns locked up, especially after last night. And uh, um, tonight was no exception. Um, there was no reason for that gun to be out that I could see, and he didn't even know it until I pointed it out to him. So, how did that gun get out? Um. Who who does have the lo the keys for the for the gun cabinet? Well, everybody. Well, anybody who has the key to the cabinet, and that's everyone in the family, uh, can get in there. And the keys to the individual weapons are in there. The idea is to keep the guns from being used casually, exactly like happened last night. But we are a big fam. We are a big family on gun safety. Mm -hmm. Are you a big family? How many are there? Well, are you? Classic, classic nuclear family. Uh, Oliver, myself, and uh, Samantha. Samantha's been—I uh, don't know. She, she, she's been a little uh, peculiar since that shooting, too. Mm -hmm. I think she—I think she knew him. Hmm. Now, you've been talking with her for a few minutes and uh, getting to know her a little bit. This is going to be a weird one. Who wants to give me a one-point spend in medicine? Yes, I have medicine. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I give you the one-point spend. Why yeah, this is the one-point one spend in medicine rather than the general skill What's the general skill? Oh, he's gone. David dropped out. <clears throat> well, this certainly took an interesting turn. Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. I should get some of those delicious cranberry vanilla <laughs> runes. Yeah. Cranberry vanilla sigils. Oi, oi, oi. Huh? What was that sound? Oh, that might be. <coughs> Okay, I had expected a quiet night to be sure. I thought I would just sit there and then it would be the next morning and you guys would be having your conversations. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at it this way. At least um, she didn't just like 
come over and murder you right away. Yeah. That's good. Like, oh, she's just going to shoot you and you're going to be yeah. dead. Just go in, <laughs> kick in the door, go up and shoot us both with our pizza still in the, our hands. <laughs> <laughs> And then yeah. she would just tell the police, "Well, I noticed they were watching us. I was just in. I was yeah, just, no, I was just shooting afraid. I went over. I was, I was afraid. I wanted to, wanted to protect my family, so I went over there and shot those guys. And they would say, No, it's that that shithead, the McNamara, and this strange, creepy guy. No problem. We don't. We will not miss those people.' <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh boy." Yeah, like the way she got the gun and just walked over, it's like, oh, she's a trained assassin. Yeah. You know, she's like stone cold about this. Yeah. Uh, she looking over, then just. <laughs> For a moment, I, I thought she was the she was the one who shot yeah. him when he went in. I was going to say, you should run out, uh, climb out the window, like onto the, if there's some kind of overhang or something, and get out of there. <laughs> there hide in the closet. <laughs> I told you we got this. No problem. No problem at all. Everything's fine. We yeah, had. 50-50 chance of getting shot. <laughs> uh, and she would probably yeah, only get... sure I can run us. faster than this guy. Yeah. So... She would, she would probably just <clears throat> get one of us and the other one would get away. Especially yeah. especially if, if, if she would get me first. I have a bit of health. She, so, she, oh. so I would only die at the third shot and that would be plenty of time for you to run. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever. You, you both have two in athletics. But Andreas has 16 in fleeing, and you only have six. <laughs> yeah, but I'm the one who so. I'm the one who opened the door, you know. So I was the first target, and you can't outrun a bullet. <laughs> you can if you're the fastest man you alive. <laughs> uh, the flash. <laughs> With 16 in fleeing, you just about are. Yeah, I, I took a lot of fleeing. I was I was also thinking that maybe I could take someone with me, piggybacking at fleeing. <laughs> <laughs> so if if so one you, of you, you can carry him. He can fire back at yeah. whoever's chasing you. <laughs> right. There's nothing wrong with this plan. No. She, uh, mind you, she could still shoot us. We we are just sitting here talking, but at any time she could shoot us, and her story would would still hold up. She was worrying who was there watching her house, and she was protecting her family. Yeah, she has, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty legit. She still holds all the cards, <laughs> and we hold bottles. There we go. Welcome back after a brief interruption. Um, yeah, we're gonna try to, yeah. was struck by a meteorite. Hmm. Might as well have been. Anyway, we're going to try to splice this one onto the end of the last one. So if you were watching the last one and suddenly hear this message, well, hey, it worked. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. Where we last left off just a few minutes ago, um, Roy had noticed some bruises on... Uh, Laura Findlay's oh. neck oh. and arm. That's what the medicine was about. That's where you cut off. So we didn't hear what it was. Mm -hmm. On the neck and arm. And these are old. These are old bruises too. Mm -hmm. So what do they look like? Uh, um, from what do uh, they? They look okay. They look like places where she was grabbed roughly. Hmm. <clears throat> so maybe, maybe that phone number wasn't for Samantha. Mm hmm. Maybe. Okay. I said you'd find this interesting, didn't I? Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. I'm going and to. So she, and she, she, 
Yeah, and she goes on telling you, uh, yeah. Now, if you want to talk to the sheriff about these things, uh, you can go ahead and do those. Uh, do, um, go ahead and talk with him about that best stuff, because I don't think we really have anything to hide in this case, just that he was a bit... Uh, I. He, he acted out of uh, feelings rather than uh, thinking things through. Mm -hmm. Which oh, I admit God. he has a little problem with. Yeah. So you saw... Uh, so, but, okay, how do I phrase this? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well... I know, right? Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is that he suddenly appeared at your home um, and... I know, that was surprising. That was really surprising. I don't think he had a gun either. He did ha Did he have a gun? I don't think he had a gun. No, I don't. I don't think he had a gun. No, no. no. Um, but... But what made him come over? That's an interesting question. I have no idea. It's right yeah. out of the blue. Bullshit detector. <laughs> yeah, bullshit detector. <laughs> oh no, she's telling the truth on this one. Mm -hmm. She she is being very upfront with you at this point. Mm -hmm. So, um, but did, did he have any connections or any contact with you before that time? So. No, Talking not really. Things. No, I I was uh, near when uh, the ambulance came for his grandmother, poor dear. And not really much to say about that. Um, I don't think anyone has had any... I don't think any of us had had any sort of contact with him, so there's really no reason for him to come running over the way he did. Mm-hmm. Well, how did he how did he hold up after his grandmother died? Did you see see anything any in his behavior? Did he did he change how he? Well, he seemed to. Okay, I I guess he was. Hmm. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe he was a little cleaner. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, still kind of shabby in his own way, but uh, I had a little bit of a feeling like he was trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he certainly looked like he was he was meaning uh, to to change his ways and uh, and leave the the ugly past behind. Well, because that came from the plan originally, yeah. yeah. Because everybody has something in in his private life, I think that they want uh, uh, to forget about or to leave behind. Some people have things like that, but sometimes they have to be remembered. Sometimes oh. that's the only way to move forward. Yeah, sometimes. I know I have some things in my life that I would like to leave behind, and maybe every every one of you, us three here. Wait does a minute! Have. Wait a minute! You were the high school teacher, weren't you? Yes, yes, that's true. Oh. The science. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, ev I think everyone has has some points where. They have trouble and whether would need help in one way or another and and other people could help <coughs> if they would just That's right. know about it. Mm -hmm. My character is very specifically mum <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just, I just was. I'm sure everyone has. No, I wasn't seen this, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Shut up, All right, everybody. <laughs> so. Should go get that note for her. 
So, um, well, I think I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Funny thing is, I think George wanted to help someone. Because, yeah, because he had, he wanted to give somebody something to help, some, some woman he wanted to help. Uh, I'm not sure what it all means, but he, he was thinking about giving a, a, some, someone a telephone number to help her. You, you're not suggesting what I think you are, are you? Well, I'm not sure. I, what do you think? Okay, you're, you're talking about, okay, follow, follow, follow this logic here with me. You're talking about George Duncan feeling the need to spontaneously help someone who he thought might be in trouble mm -hmm. when he came running into our house. Wait, you don't mean you think he was there to help you? I don't think he was there to help me. I. What number are we talking about? Well, um, um, let's see. And how are you going to broach this subject? I wonder. I, I'm I'm looking for the for that for that for that notepad. I have it somewhere. And you probably have it too. And I probably have it too. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, this here. He had this on his. He had this on his uh, on his desk over there. She looks at that number. Wait here. <laughs> the woman. The woman with the gun tells you, and then goes walking calmly over to her house again. Oh. oh. When a woman with a gun says, wait here, my advice is, wait there. No, no. <laughs> Out of sight. To the con on the contrary, if she says, wait here, uh, I'm going to follow her and ask her, oh, what, what do you think? What are you trying to do? Uh, no, don't come over here yet. I want to confirm something first. In mm -hmm. fact, wait back over in the dead man's house. Uh, oh, I don't um, believe I just said that. <laughs> wait a second. Um, you still have your gun in your hand. Um, mine. Yes, I do. Would and you it's mind stay there for a while? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's tough to crack. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she continues walking back over to her house with intent. Uh, but intent to do what? Uh, probably check what's going on upstairs in her daughter's bedroom. Quietly talk to her husband, I'm sure. Yeah. With no ill effects. Let's... Maybe she's going to dial a phone number. So oh, I'm 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 taking a look at Jonathan uh, in the direction. If Jonathan also came with me, I didn't I didn't watch out if it if he followed us, or if he did. Did John come with Roy? Uh, uh, John, said, uh, Roy? John, John went back to watching the house. Ah, great. From the other house. Mm -hmm. From the uh -huh. other house. So Roy, you're out there by yourself. Okay. Um, uh, I'm looking at the beer bottle for advice, but it's ominously silent. <laughs> it just stares at you open-mouthed. Yeah. <laughs> I take a last swig, then I drop it, and then I follow her. It just, has nothing more to say on the subject. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> just, in case, just in case I'm needed, I'm going to follow her. 
Yeah. <laughs> Nothing bad can come of this. Let's see. Uh, at least, at least, if I go out, I I have somebody in the back in the dead man's house who will be the witness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what's um, going on. She she grabs her purse. Uh, immediately turns to head out and said, mm -hmm. uh, points the gun at you. Trigger finger not on trigger. And said, I totally thought I told you to wait over there. Now go on. Um, what's She's going on? <sighs> she has the finger not on the trigger. She has it on the her side. Her finger is okay. off the trigger. Her finger so. is off to the side. So she knows how to handle that thing. Well, get moving. I don't. I, please, please get moving. Well, I don't understand what's going on. I, I say, I want to clear quietly. I, I, I want to try to clear things up. Now, get moving, please. Well, can I can I help you in some way? She starts pushing you. Yes, you can help by moving in that direction. Okay, I'm moving in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not far. Uh, so, so she pushes me outside. On. She's okay. She starts pushing you outside, but then she looks up to the second floor and then pulls you back next to the house. Okay. I let myself be pulled next to the house. <laughs> okay, that number you had. Let me. Okay, that you still have the pad with you with that number. Yes. Mm -hmm. She goes into her purse, pulls out a card to the Lifeline Emergency Clinic that has the same number on it already. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. So that's why you have. Yeah. I I, I show uh, I I hold my hand to my ne my own neck to indicate where she has her bruises. Yes, Oliver has a bit of a temper. He's already seeing someone about it, and uh, I have made it clear I will not put up with it if he starts uh, getting snippy with me again. Okay. That's one way to describe it. <laughs> okay. Because I have the keys to the gun cabinet just the same as he does. But this is curious because I have the number to the clinic just in case. He does get uh, start backsliding. He is seeing a therapist, so he is trying to deal with the problem. That raises the question, who was he bringing the number to? And there's only one option I can think of. She looks up at Samantha's window. Um, well, huh? you should <laughs> probably talk to her, but not with a gun. <laughs> She's not the one I think I would need to talk to with a gun at this point. Still, it's wise not to use guns in a in, a, in an emotional situation. I know that's how most accidents occur. Exactly. So if you would just give the gun to me and then you go upstairs and look what's go, what's Excuse what. Excuse me. This is this is part of a husband's collection. I am not letting it out of I am not letting it out of collection. And no, after I'm this, just I'm not letting it out of my sight. I'm just standing here. I'm waiting here for you. If you need it, you won't know where to find it here in my hand. I'm just standing here. I'm not leaving. Well, the gun's not leaving my hand. At least until I put it back in the case. Okay, maybe you should put you should put it back in the case and then go watch. Then go look what's uh, what's what. Maybe you know it's but whatever's going on I will whatever's going on I will see to it however I need to. Don't say, yeah. bringing a gun to a talk will change the talk. Yeah, I'm probably not going to. I'm probably not going to have. Just, just trust me with this. Uh, does she look like I can trust her? And she, and she goes back. And she goes back into the house. It looks like you've given her a. Uh, it looks like you've given her a lot to think about. And she and like I said, she goes back into the house, and there you are, up against the uh, house. 
Hmm. Pizza's getting cold. No, wait a second. Since what can I what can I use to 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 uh, to check uh, if I can understand what will happen? Uh, Shrink, perhaps. Let's see. As I've opened the spreadsheet up on another computer, halfway across the room. Sense mm -hmm. trouble. What was oh, yeah, that? <laughs> Well, I have, don't... I still have shrink. I can use shrink to just try to uh, understand, try to see how she might react Yay! in a tricky situation. Yeah, that wouldn't quite be that skill. I'm trying to think what would it be to uh, sort of predict. Mm -hmm. And. Actually, and actually, you know what? I am going to give you a, a shrink test on this. Mm -hmm. The difficulty number is four. How many points do you want to spend? Um, It'll be I whatever you roll on one d6. So yeah. You've already spent a bunch. Mm, I'm going to spend one. OK, you're going to spend one. That will put your shrink down to four points left in the pool. Mm -hmm. But I only need to reach three now. And now I see, let's see, let's see. Yes! Yes! Three! <laughs> that was the best spending check ever. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Maximum efficiency, that's always nice. Yeah. Yeah, she's probably going to be calm about it tonight. She's probably not going to discuss a whole lot of the sensitive stuff until next week. But mm -hmm. you kind of get the feeling that she thinks that uh, Samantha may be in trouble from Oliver. Okay, but she is cool. She is at the moment cool. Okay, stability, I trust. stability in her case may be running just a bit low. Okay, still, I de I decide to trust mm -hmm. her because she's but cool. But she's not she out knows, yet. She knows the ins and outs of a gun. She knows what happens. Okay, I'm going to trust her. Okay. And after you hear some noises in the uh, house that you can't see around the corner to uh, judge, she peeks her head out. Okay, you can go back over now. The gun's in the case. It's okay for now. Okay. See you. <laughs> and then I'm going back to the house. And talking with uh, John about stuff, I bet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, ain't that a kick in the head? Yeah. Yep. I'm interested what what Jonathan saw from his from his vantage point. He saw much more than I did. I heard more, he <laughs> saw more. Yeah, let me know if I saw anything. Uh, well, you saw Well, you saw Oliver eventually stop talking with uh, Samantha and go into the master bedroom, which is on the left. Laura Put the gun back in the case just like uh, she you will find out later said she did uh -huh. mm -hmm. but when they got up but when laura got upstairs well she checked on laura went upstairs checked on samantha then went to the master bedroom with her husband and maybe looked at him just a bit suspiciously and so, so we can argue immediately Mm -hmm. And so we can get to the next day. Yay. Oh. We made it alive through the night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Double strike. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was some, that was some panic, too. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, just, sort of, uh, just sort of apropos of nothing, I've been looking for connections between uh, whatever group it was that that symbol was just... It gave me the title of the book that that symbol was in. I looked for connections between, you know, look for a little bit more about the uh, author of that book, and also look for connections between that person and Lansdowne. Or okay. the name that I would know of the person who mentioned the shack and the will. So far, you're not finding any connections. Well, there you go. Oh, and that's my good. evening. Okay, next day. I assume that you will sh share 
Yes. What you found with the rest all of the us. All the juicy details. Yes. Otherwise, it's going to be super might awkward. Just... Wow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Who's to say it won't be? Can I work uh, true. It's not, a, it's not a scandal sheet. Either. No, it is a community newspaper. Yeah, I think I'd probably better not write up an article about it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly what's the next festival to be, right? In, a, in oh, this newspaper, and a little and a little discussion of local events. Mm. And by the way, by the way, I'm just I just want to mention this, Dave. When he talks about her talking about the gun being out, and neither one of them uh, remembers taking it out. And it was out, and yeah. he didn't notice until right before. I suddenly start thinking about a sickle on a box in my mm -hmm. dining nook mm -hmm. that I didn't put there, and that I didn't see like 20 seconds after I noticed it. it didn't yes. seem to be there. I know, I right? About that too, mm -hmm. yeah. I thought about that too, but Roy doesn't know about that. <laughs> So we're thinking maybe this is being orchestrated by a criminal mastermind who's a master hypnotist or a stage magician or something. But mm -hmm. it's just something weird. People seeing things that aren't there or vice versa. And it occurs to me that George might have seen um, might have seen uh, um, might have seen Oliver beating on Samantha when he actually wasn't. Or something. Interesting notion. Mm -hmm. Crispy. You'll have to ask him. Oh wait. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah. Uh, the only way I can think of to ask him is a Ouija board. But talking about Ouija boards, I'll just say this: there was somebody I knew about who used to, who worked in a like an occult store. People would come in and say, "Do you carry Ouija boards?" And he would say, "No, we don't." Oh, don't they work? No, they work. And why don't <laughs> you hear them? Because they work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband and I are pegging. We 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 won't allow them in our home because yeah, no, don't mess with it. But in a setting such as this, I feel my character would totally fuck everything up with it. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. I was going to say, if you want to talk to the dead guy, just talk to my character in the occultist. Maybe later. Yeah. Maybe later, yeah. Yeah. First, we have anyway, Mr. Given, Frechette to talk about. Too. I'm just remembering when Dawn Summers asked when she could start uh, uh, doing some teenage thing, and Buffy, her legal guy, said, guardian said to her, not until you're never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. So, anyway, it's the, it's the next day. It's uh, Saturday, I believe. Mm -hmm. the day of the party. So all sorts, all the usual oh, yes. work schedule type stuff. Mm -hmm. The day of the party. Yeah. What's the deal with the party? It's a oh. party I got invited to yeah. by someone. The hip, the hip uh, people uh, are invited. Sort of society oh. party. Yeah. Trying to be snooty about it about themselves. Snooty at each other about the less fortunate in the neighborhood and feel superior to them. <laughs> no, nothing. Nothing about feeling superior to anybody else. Just generally feeling superior, <laughs> right? And artsy and uh, socially active, mm. right? Yeah. Which is Kamaria, except she doesn't tend to have that superior feeling. Impressed with themselves. Nice. Maybe just a, maybe just a bit of that. No. It's yeah. it's a puffery thing, but still, that's not till the evening. Anything could happen before then. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. but nothing will. <laughs> now you've no, now, now at this point you know uh, the extra information, including that Laura Findlay already had the number to the Lifeline Emergency Clinic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she probably wasn't the person that George was trying to get it to. He um, definitely wasn't the person. Well, so it's about time that the girls talk to Samantha in some in some setting. Yeah, though uh, I don't know. It doesn't 
I don't think it completely rules out that George was trying to give the number to Laura, but uh, it does certainly make it less likely. I don't know if yes. it changes anything, but... It definitely makes it less likely. And also, it, the situation was not... It was a strange situation, him coming over all of a sudden while they were not not uh, fighting. So they were just sitting in the room, nothing much happening. And then he came over. Suddenly, apparently, while cleaning out his refrigerator. Mm-hmm. Late at night. Late at night. Uh, once again, it occurs to you, he might have heard like uh, the sounds of a loud argument and Samantha screaming and fists hitting flesh or something. And wow. again, that would explain why the Finleys didn't hear that. If somebody, if, okay, but again, again, I'm not, I, you know what, the thing is, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Martin would be willing to, I mean, he's a reporter, which means he's got a certain amount of natural skepticism. Mm -hmm. I don't think this would be something he'd seriously be considering, the possibility that somebody is messing with people's perception. Yes, but he wouldn't certainly wouldn't think it wouldn't occur to him that that was what was happening. Just he knows something odd about people either not noticing things or not noticing things that weren't true, and and I'm like probably not. I think Martin is not really seriously believing that even for a moment. He's just having a so it's kind of odd that people. And then, sort of at the same time, I mean, he's at this point his mental mental state is sort of like, nah, like that. Yeah. <coughs> so wonder, and you you also didn't mention the sickle to us. Well, I, it didn't seem relevant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so you probably about the so you probably wouldn't also mention that that idea with the hypnotism to us. Yeah, I probably wouldn't mention. I wouldn't mention those ideas to you guys, but I'm just sort of, sort of. It was an out of character speculation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what we would know is just what we heard from her, mm -hmm. from Laura, and so we would. Point. So we would still want to know from Samantha if, if that uh, number might have been t to for her and what kind of contacts she had with George. So did she have contact with George? Did she talk with him? Who does she text to and all this stuff? We would want to know about Samantha. I we did have his phone records if there were texting records too. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that they routinely... You might... Uh, say, uh, yeah, you, can, you can get... You, you can get call lengths and uh, times off of the uh, phone uh, accounts. Uh, they don't store okay. as uh, conveniently... Um, they don't store texts in the cloud. Or right. They, well, they do kind of, but they don't typically mm -hmm. attach that sort of information to the billing. Of course, of course, Just when the text occurred, not what the content was. And of course, this, assume, this assumes that he actually has a phone that can handle texts. He might just have a landline. You know, considering his financial situation. Well, at this point, a uh, cell phone is kind of almost needed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I got by with that one for quite a while. Yeah. Eventually, I had to get one for work. So still, uh, had, Samantha had to get one for work. Prosecution rests. <laughs> so the. <clears throat> so well, the, it's the kind of job where you needed to be available no matter where you were. It doesn't yeah. seem to be like a delivery boy for a uh, local store. No, uh, this is the kind of job that requires them to be able to get in touch with you at a moment's notice. Uh, landlines are on the way out. But then a certain That's amount true. of. Um, I know there are several people I know who don't bother with landlines anymore. They got rid of landlines. Mm -hmm. Now I just want to push a little farther forward until a little farther forward before the uh, session ends this time, properly. I mean, <laughs> intentionally. Yeah, uh -huh. and then I have some splicing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we'll see how that goes. So, is there a chance for the girls to meet? Is there a chance for the girls to meet? 
Now, yeah. what sort of places would the girls be looking? Well, yeah. We, the girl. Uh, I would uh, probably want to try to talk to her yeah, we, uh, we right after school, talk to maybe? Samantha. We should probably get her the information we have now. The information what? Well, basically, the stuff you just found out. If we, mm. Remember, last time we spoke to Lucy, she was going to go talk to Samantha. Uh, but she should, before she does that, she should probably know what you guys have found out. Yeah, yeah. The team knows what we just, what we found out this night. So, Tamaria. Tamaria. Would it help to talk to a girl? Hint, hint. But I wasn't sure if she would. The NPC would nibble on that. She opened up. She opened just fine with an adult. <laughs> no. Um. Samantha, though, maybe a little harder to reach. Yeah. Yes. So let's see. Five people. You counting how many fate tokens you need? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just uh, no, I'm just sort of doing some random math here, and uh, of the five of you, well, I'm going to throw to uh, uh, Casey mm -hmm. the opportunity to catch uh, Samantha outside the Mammoth Mart. Okay. Hmm. Huh. When, when is this happening? Uh, it's happening late morning. After breakfast, before lunch. Uh, I kind of wanted to. You know, since the, you know, since TV doesn't have cartoons on the in on Saturday morning anymore, generally. Uh, that Except is so truly totally like. <laughs> well, it's a small town. They still mine on local station. The the end of an era. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I after, after uh, what the uh, Roy she so, and, she sort of well if you're not going, if you're not going to approach her she's just sort of going to flounce along yes I said flounce uh, to the store uh, do girls, some sort uh, of uh, it's it's, it's, going to flounce. it's it's mm -hmm. not so much that I don't want to talk to her it's just that I need to reevaluate what the goals are and how we want to go about it based on uh, what had happened the night before. Because we, mm -hmm. we sort, of, mm -hmm. sort of already confirmed a few things. Um, Found out some new things. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that kind of changes perhaps the, the tone or maybe the, the tack that we would take. Yes. Um, but what we don't know is if she had contact with George. And we know that she called him, and then oh. he called her back, and then she. And if she, again. and if she has, uh, yeah, right. We know that she talked to him on the phone, but we don't know what about. We don't know the content, what it was about, and if, and if he he got that number for her. Might not we be don't know that either. Her to her that we know when they talked on the phone. Well. That would be a pretty brute force attempt. No, we yeah. want we want to be nice. We don't want and to frighten her. Oh. We know who you talk to at <laughs> night. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh, nice to meet you. Hey, listen, we were just looking at your phone records, and uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 To like. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the tricky thing. How do you how do you broach that? How do you like, broach a subject like that? Like, if you intentionally go talk to someone, it's it's less weird than if you just had the opportunity. You know what? Maybe maybe I could set up a meeting with her. That that at least could be a thing. Um. Yeah, I think that's what I will do, and then I can buy myself some more time to think about it. Um, flouncing, huh? Yeah, she sees a boy she knows in the uh, 
sees, she sees a boy she knows coming out of the Mammoth Mart, and she does this sort of complicated wave at him. You know, yeah. Well, it looks like uh, partially. Gosh, it looks like Tom got you. I'm not waving at you. It, it, it looks a bit like a wave and a bit like the uh, Gettysburg Address in ASL. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's. Hmm. It's like any town. So, I, so I like I said, a freaky, a freaky, a freaky complex hand wave. Right. So either she's casting a spell at him, or yeah. uh, she's just trying to be cool. Well, if she's casting a spell at him, he's reciprocating. Yep. It's a mage duel. Yeah, uh, it'll be fingerless <laughs> gloves and black lipstick next. You just watch. They are tapping the lens, and then they are. Chinksing each other. All right. <laughs> All right. His head explodes. It's very comical. So, um, when she passes near the exploding heads, when aren't they funny? <laughs> <laughs> well, when it's your own, probably. <laughs> yeah. It's tragic then. A um, cranial eruption is never any fun while you're having it. So uh, when she passes by, um, I will introduce myself. Uh, Samantha, mm -hmm. is it? Uh, yes. Um, now I've now I've got a channel. Now I've got a channel teenage girl, hmm. especially that teenage girl. <laughs> Let's wish me luck. I'm going in. Yes. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm I'm Casey. Um, I'm I'm not exactly sure how to go about this, but um, I it's okay if you don't want to talk about it now. But some friends and I were just sort of um, heard about what happened with uh, George the other night. Um, oh, yeah, your neighbor. That's, you know, really terrible that that happened. Um, we. Let me take a moment and check Casey's pools. Oh, okay. Uh, I got negotiate. Oh, no, wrong, wrong column. Where's the right column? There, there we Did go. Do you still want me there? Oh, uh, well, since it's sort of an impromptu catching her at work. I also have reassurance, which might be appropriate here. Yeah, yeah. It's, a chance, it's a chance meeting. Ah. Yeah, although I was going to try to set up like a time to discuss it where you would be. Oh, Casey. Casey has no technical skills? Really? Uh -oh. Fortunately, she doesn't need him in this case. Mm -hmm. That was I a mean, close one. Notice uh, it may have made sense, but mostly, you uh, know, interpersonal. Oh. Skills and some research and law stuff is, yeah, what uh, fit the character. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the rest of those wouldn't necessarily make sense for her. Yeah. Yeah. Again, notice would be the, the one. But. Notice would be the one. But you'll get an opportunity for that sooner or later. You'll get experience at some point. I really yeah. need to I'm just going to save alone. that up. Yeah. They are really good for her job, for her old job, the, those she, ha she has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very anyway, well picked. Anyway, continuing to push ahead. Yes. So, um, yeah, you're not sure how to bring this up, but, but um, I know uh, he was your neighbor, and so maybe if you need to, he was my uh, neighbor. I didn't know him that well. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I I suppose that's good, all things considering. Pause for a moment. I, I'm not actually sure how to, to say that. Well, except for except for one thing, you know that she called him first. Oh, um, true. Uh, I may just have to forge ahead and and just say that, regardless. Um, all right. Uh, I have it on, on good authority that you. Uh, Called him a few times, and and uh, talked to him briefly. Well, authority's been known to lie. 
Mm. Uh, in this in this case, I, I'm pretty sure it's it's it actually happened. Um, I have access to some phone records, so I mean it. I know what happened. It's it's cool. Phone records. Phone records. Blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> the government, man. They get their fingers in everything. <laughs> oh God! That would actually be a really funny um, opportunity for uh, impersonation. Yeah, I'm I'm with the Department of something or other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, the Department of Fish and Game. So, the yeah the Department the Federal of Fish and Game. Egg Answering Room. <laughs> <laughs> I happened to see the phone records. Would be less intimidating than how I have access to phone records. I suppose, but uh, I'm kind of on the spot right now. I'm doing the best I yeah. can. Um, okay, okay, go on. So, mm -hmm. we could spend a point of reassurance and think of the best way to put this. Yeah, reassure her. Th that's reassure her that you don't get anything by looking going through her underwear drawer. I want to reassure <laughs> her that. Uh, and I'll see if I can find a way to craft that into words that that you want to help. That, uh, yeah, that I want to help. That I'm, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. That Ooh. I'm non-threatening. No, I'm random person who works at the Mammoth Mart. Um, uh, I meant, can I help you find some groceries today? Yeah, yeah. What, are, what do you think I was talking about? We have a sale. Yeah, well, on, I was uh, looking at your phone records and I said, we've got a sale on canned soup this week. Um, that uh, I, d I don't know if if uh, if you were friends with him or anything, but um, I I have some acquaintances who. If if you needed help with anything uh, going on at home, uh, they're they're really cool. Uh, if there's just anything you want to talk about, uh, it can be totally uh, low key, uh, confidential. It, it's not going to you know go out to to friends or anyone at school. Just if uh, you have any concerns, you I don't know what I okay, okay, okay. Let me stop you right there before you embarrass yourself further. I don't care what the druggie told you. I am in control of the situation. That's what a point in bullshit detectors. Well done. Oh, so do I <laughs> yeah. spend uh, reassurance there, or did that? Uh, you are not spending reassurance because that would not be the appropriate thing for this time. Okay. Well done. She's the tough cookie. Mm -hmm. She seems well, to be. Kick open a door, or. Potentially. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Maybe. Um, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, you really don't know who did that, and she's not wearing the right kind of shoes. Well, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> the murder shoes are back at home. Um, it can't possibly be the person who kicked open the door because the person who kicked open the door doesn't wear those shoes. <laughs> the, yes. person who kicked open, the person who kicked open that door has feet. Oh, wait. Um, and, <laughs> and as we know, the pair of shoes you are born with are the pair of shoes that you have for your entire life and cannot be changed <laughs> under any circumstances. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, really? So who, who's been talking? Uh, Come on, who told you that I needed help? A little bird told me. <laughs> yeah, you need. You, yeah, you need to stop. Yeah, you need to stop listening to that little bird. Wow, so it's tweeting. It, it's tweeting nonsense. So yeah, hang around with birds too much. Hmm. Crap on well done. So I guess. So I guess you. Uh, I must have read the situation wrong. You. You really didn't. Uh, uh, you, not friends in any way with uh, George. Okay. Okay. Well, no, why would I be? Seemed like a nice enough person from what I saw. Trying to turn his life around. 
That was a great line. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could take credit for it. <laughs> well, he's dead now, and I can't help anybody, so. <laughs> oh. Indeed. Well, then. Um, so, so what I wanted to do <laughs> was try to use bullshit detector because I think she knows. Well, I mean, it, not just from like the 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 um, physical evidence that we found, but like her attitude is. is uh, yeah, her attitude. Yeah, her attitude doesn't strike you as that of a teenage girl who's uh, um, ha who uh, merely witnessed a murder downstairs. It's, it's it's not striking me as the, the attitude of somebody either who uh, had you know their friend or an acquaintance murdered, or somebody who, who did and is trying to be cool about it. Like, <laughs> oh uh, no, she's not trying to be cool about it. She like, is totally. Uh, if, if she felt anything for George Duncan, uh, you you think you'd be seeing a little piece of it. You're I'm, not. I'm hypothesizing so, that she orchestrated this whole like event. She read about it in the news and had no greater connection to the situation than that. You, you'd almost get the feeling maybe she's a bit happy about it. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and that's, that's, so, that's what I'm maybe thinking she, she uh, orchestrated it or well, wanted then, it yeah. to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Granted, that's possibly jumping to conclusions, but um, it seems like it would fit the facts. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So well. do you still think I need help? Um, no, no, it seems like you're, you're in control of the situation. Uh, so, um, told you, please have a good day. And, uh, uh, there, yeah, just there curious. Soda. Does this, does this little bird of yours have a name? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh, I don't have anybody, uh, David, that I want to die. So, <laughs> so unless, and so unless we're gonna have an elaborate ruse where I direct him towards someone else in the party, and Hieronymus Mergenthal. What was that? I said Hieronymus Mergenthal. That I don't know who that is or what character is nobody Tim, does the most bullshit name i can think of that i pulled oh. out no <laughs> but probably someone who relives in the next village and that would be his death sentence so yeah no. <laughs> yeah Pro with my life <laughs> yep just some gossip death death by someone else's alibi <laughs> mm. yep. okay it's just some gossip that's great <clears throat> Just some gossip, which I guess is wrong. Oh, yeah, gossip. Yeah, gossip, I guess, happens. Don't let it happen again. Oh, jeez. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I, like... I, I need uh, protective <laughs> needles on my guard. <laughs> you need a... Yeah. Don't forget, she's also proficient with guns. <laughs> Yeah. Her, mother, her mother said everybody in the family oh, had access yeah. to the guns and knows how to use them. She's 17 and has a lot of... fires together and spires together. <laughs> yeah, she uh... probably... She probably learned it when she was age four. <laughs> so, basically, so basically how this works out is... Don't piss this little bitch off. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does she no, have I'm something... I'm sorry Mario wasn't there because I would have given her attitude right back. <laughs> yeah. Does she have something that looks trendy? How would you know? Oh, she's because I want to older than you are. Because I went to s spend a point in flattery and not like die. Like, oh, <laughs> that's a really nice purse, or you know, th those shoes, or something to to not die. <laughs> you know what? I'll let you spend. Hey, is that one of them cell phone thingies? <laughs> Can I have a look? Oh, I'm on the wrong column. There we go. We'll spend that point of flattery. And you know what? 
Um, well, I'm not sure what. I'm, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of that spend next week. Okay. Did um, did I spend a point of bullshit detector too, or was that you didn't? You did not have to spend a point of bullshit detector. It was okay. that veneer was... thin. <laughs> I know people like her. <laughs> no, not like her. But we'll get to that next week. It's about time I uh, stopped the broadcast.